Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing an experimental sort of semi-abstract painting um, using watercolour inks and I'm going to start off using um, these interesting like crystalline inks um, by Colourcraft called Brusho Colours. I heard about these from the wonderful Karen Rice by watching some of her brilliant YouTube videos and some of the people in my Patreon group have been using them and it got me curious so I thought I'd have a go and see what I could do. So I'm now going to show you, this is one that I did earlier and there's a full demonstration for this over um, on my Patreon group. So follow the link below if you're interested. And so I'm going to be trying to do something sort of similar to that. But with these sorts of paintings, every single one is going to be completely different. So let's see how it turns out. Now my board is laying flat. It's very important um, to start with and I'm going to spray it this time rather than wetting it with the brush because I want to have some fairly random marks. Um, as I said, this product is a sort of crystallised pigments. Um, they come in little pots and the suggestion is, is that you pierce the top with a skewer and then you can tap out the colours. This is Prussian blue. And you can already see how the pigment is sort of bursting out, the powders are bursting out into the wet uh, patches on the paper. And where the water is pulled up, um, then it's bursting out even more. This is dark brown. I mean, it isn't a particularly dark brown, but it's a lovely rich colour. So I'm tapping a bit of that in and then just going to spray the board a bit more to see what happens. It's really fascinating watching the way the powdered inks or crystalline inks flow. And I like the orangey colours in that brown, so I think I'm going to add some, some more warmth with this crimson and see what happens. And I'm hoping that the crimson and the blue should mix together and I should get some sort of pinky... Um, mauves and maybe some violets and now a bit of burnt sienna just for good measure oh starting to really build up and mix into some lovely rich darks there this is really interesting I'm going to now tip and tilt my board around in various directions watching the way everything's flowing um, and making some adjustments spraying a bit if I think I'm getting a sort of a line that's too rigid. I'm looking for something very soft and blurry, but with different tones and textures. Um, some unpainted paper, but lots of these lovely sort of flow lines and marks. You can see where the paper's dry. The ink is not running in those areas. And I really like the way it's looking, um, but the water, there's so much water on the page, it's pooling up. Um, so I'm going to use a tissue to dab it out. Now, this might seem like um, sort of a disastrous thing to do. It isn't too bad with these inks. They are watercolour based, but because they're inks, they will dry permanent. Um, and so when I'm dabbing out the water, I'm not really dabbing out much in the way of colour because the colour has pretty much seems to have settled into the pores of the paper. So now I'll just carry on going backwards and forwards, sprinkling a little bit more of this, a little bit more of that, just deciding which colours I want to carry through in different areas. It's fascinating, isn't it, watching this? I'm really intrigued by um, this process. It's so much fun. OK, it's not really painting as such, i.e. sort of using brush strokes to create patterns and pictures, but it's a lovely way to exploit the wonderful wet-in-wet -wet qualities of water-based media. I'm starting to get a better sort of flow across the whole sheet of paper now, which is what I'm looking for. But I'm trying to do it slowly and gradually so that I can keep some of the 
areas of pretty marks and sort of light and these kind of sort of tracery of marks. I'm trying to keep some of that if I can. Sort of spraying it to encourage a bit more of running and tilting the board as well, laying it back flat once it's run enough. And then again, as the water pools up, then I'm going to use a tissue. I'm going to mop up and clean up around the tape so I don't get any runbacks. And I'm going to just use the tissue to mop out any pools that are building up on the surface of the paper. Um, the paper is a quarter sheet of quarter imperial sheet of Saunders Waterford cold press paper. Um, so yeah, continuing to work on this, I'm just dabbing it out a bit and I'm, I keep looking at it and seeing if I can see something interesting in it. And I've decided that I'm going to turn the board upside down and spray those really dark heavy patches there that have got still got quite a lot of powdery pigment left in their centers so i want to sort of get rid of that disperse that if i can and in the meantime build up that lovely tracery of softly diffused colors and deep rich tones and hues Now I'm going to lay it flat again to stop it all flowing downwards. And I'm thinking just maybe just bring a bit of light and sort of brightness back to some of the areas. Um, I'm going to sprinkle on a colour that I haven't used uh, into the still wet ink. Um, I'm going to sprinkle on, once I've cleaned up the pools of water, um, a little bit of yellow ochre here and there just to lighten up and brighten a few areas you can see the sort of spots of yellow beginning to flow and develop a little bit in in the in onto the damp paper And I'm finding out that it's always best to just wait for a second or so and see what's happening before you decide to go and do anything else. Um, as the powder, some, sometimes it bursts out really quickly if the paper's very wet. Um, other times it's much, much slower. And here, I think, because parts of my paper have begun to dry, I think I'm going to help incorporate that yellow with another spray. So just um, loosening up those um, yellow ochre areas a bit more so that they can blend and diffuse in with the rest. And then again, tipping and tilting as I've got a lot of water again on the surface of the, of the paper. and then dabbing out where there are extra pools. And you can see that as I dab, even though I'm taking out ink, I'm not getting any nasty marks or anything like that because um, the dyes in the brush-o seem to have sort of begun to sunk permanently into the pores of the paper. And here you can see I've left it to dry and like watercolour it's dried quite a lot lighter although the sun is coming in through the window which is sort of bleaching it out a little bit and I've re-taped it because I, everything got so soggy that my tape uh, became detached so as so I've taped it onto a dry board and now I'm going to put on some trees like in the one that I showed you earlier that's on Patreon using my stick pens. I've got a variety of stick pens and I've got um, a big bottle of Jackson's um, Indian ink which is waterproof and permanent and a lovely ink to use. My stick pens are just driftwood pieces that I've found on the beach 
and I've carved them into points either with a knife or in a pencil sharpener. I just find they give me a lovely expressive line. So I'm sort of following the marks on the paper that the brush -o has given me. And I'm following that. I don't want to cover up all the marks that indicate where my tree branches should go, especially through that light patch there. I'm going to just bring through some of these beautiful silhouetted trees, keeping it nice and simple. I'm trying out a few of my different stick pens here. Um, I want some really nice thin lines as well as these heavy, thick um, tree trunks. And slowly sort of build up a, a tracery of branches. Because I'm just dipping these pieces of wood into the ink, you have to sort of keep dipping because you don't get much ink on the tip. So it keep refilling um, again and again. But as you can see, I'm building up some beautiful random lines and they're much more expressive, I think, than if I was using um, fine liners, although I do like fine liners. And of course, fine liners will work for this. Um, what they won't work for is this part here, where I've just sprayed um, the bottom of the tree to spread out the ink and get it to diffuse in a similar sort of way to the underpainting, <clears throat> excuse me, that I did with Brusho. So this is the main reason that I've chosen the Indian ink, is that I am going to um, spray it in places to give me that real beautiful flow that will help to um, bring harmony to the marks that I'm making here for these silhouetted abstract trees against the abstract background. So I suppose you don't really need waterproof ink. Any ink would do for this um, because you want the, well, it's really lovely to get the ink to flow using the water spray um, for the bottom half of this experimental painting. I'm trying to keep these trees looking as natural as I, as I can and sort of pulling them across the sky. Now this is a medium Chinese calligraphy brush and I've dipped it in the ink and I'm just randomly uh, creating a sort of horizon line, so to speak, or the ground um, on which my trees are sitting and going straight in, no hesitation, and just spraying um, and letting that ink run down. It's making a mess, so if you do do this, make sure you've got plenty of newspaper underneath your board um, or something, something to protect whatever surface that you're working on because um, when ink dries, it can, it can you know, stain things permanently, so beware. I've got very inky fingers still from this, um, which I will eventually scrub off, but... <laughs> I don't mind. So going back in with the brush, softening a little bit and also putting in some sort of harder marks, maybe pulling a bit down with a brush, um, adding some more water here and there if you need to. You can always go in with the spray again if you need to. So now for this final tree on this side, so I have the, the sort of the double tree on the right and a single tree on the left. Just keeping it nice and simple because there's quite a lot going on in my background. So I want to make sure that the trees complement that.
You could, of course, um, you could use the brusho for this. Um, you could take, take some out of the little pots and mix it with water into whatever colour of ink that you want, maybe one of the deep brownish reddy colours here in the background. And then you could just use that and paint that on with brushes for your trees. I mean, the possibilities are endless with something like this. It's so much fun to experiment with. I shall put a, um, some, the information um, down below for um, the brusho and the inks. So now this is nearly finished. Um, it's just a matter of um, working across the trees and introducing a few more branches here and there and taking them some of them right off the paper over the tape i want to make sure that everything's linked um, the shadows the foreground and have this sort of tracery of branches pulled up across the painting kind of um, think of these almost as my sort of stained glass trees. I think it reminds me of a sort of really wild stained glass window. So now just the last few branches, because I'm feeling like I've got enough there. I don't want to have too many of them um, covering up the light in the sky. So now I'm just sort of standing back, having a look at it and seeing if I need any extra. I think that will do. So I'm going to remove the tape, being careful to tear away from the painting um, so that if it was to tear the paper, I'm not going to tear my picture. And now that we've got this nice clean white border, it gives us a nice fresh look on this and I'm really pleased with the effect. Um, I really enjoyed creating that really amazing background with the brush -o. I think it's a lovely medium for expressing yourself and playing and having so much fun um, and then using what you produce to create an interesting picture um, with the Indian inks. I can't resist going in and just seeing where I need to sort of thicken up another branch. So if we look closely, you can see there's all sorts of colours and diffusions and effects in there. Um, and it's all kind of really brought together by the Indian ink and the simplicity of the black lines made with the stick pen, but also with the water spray. So I hope that was useful. Um, please uh, give us a thumbs up and um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and click the bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I post new videos. And thank you so much to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.